Hey, what's up, and welcome to Movie Dumpster Season 6, Episode 12. Today we're talking about Night of the Demons 3 from 1997, directed by Jimmy Kaufman. I'm Joel Escola. And I'm Sean O'Rourke. Welcome to the Dumpster. Happy Trick or Trash, Sean. A uh, happy Trick or Trash indeed. Oh, uh, jumping right into the dumpster at the beginning of October here. It's the most wonderful time. You're a little early there. That's well, December. For me. Uh, oh, okay. It's, well, the, yeah, it's, yeah, a, yeah, it's same, the beginning, same. right? You go you right in October, you hit Halloween, boom, you go into Thanksgiving, boom, you go into Christmas. It's like this big you ride this big wave oh, like of the, cozy. Uh, yeah. Sure, of the holidays. Yeah, yeah sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So we figured we'd kick it off this year with the third installment of Night of the Demons. We're rounding out the trilogy. Cover the first two uh, in the in the previous iteration of the, the audio version, those yeah. earlier seasons, finally making it to the third one, kind of like we did with Stepfather. Sure. Rounding the bases on yeah. it. I think uh, I think the first one, was that the first season? Was that our Halloween episode for the first yeah, season or the it, second season? Uh, I think that was the first year because we did it on the 31st. Yeah. Uh, and it was our 31st episode, funnily enough. Yeah. Uh, second one, I think, was season four. four. Three or four. It was, it was our last audio-only season. Yeah. Yeah, so, okay, uh, so yeah. And it was our last episode. It was actually, I think, again, our Halloween episode. But this time, it's coming in hot. Oh, it's Beginning coming of the in month. hot, baby, yeah. Um, so yeah, yeah, we do usually use it, for, uh, save it for Halloween. Sure. Uh, but yeah, go check out uh, Night of the Demons and Night of the Demons 2. We have them up on YouTube or listen uh, wherever you get your podcasts. Uh, maybe catch up before you listen to this one or, you know, hang around if you've already listened to them. And before we head to Whole House, Joe, if you guys want some more Movie Dumpster content, including an ad-free version of the audio podcast, uh, head over to patreon.com slash movie dumpster. Uh, it's only $2 and get yourself into the uh, Movie Dumpster community. Get yourself in there. Stick your toes in. Join the fun you sure can and if you're watching on youtube do us a favor and hit that like button and subscribe if you haven't because it really helps the show and if you're listening on your favorite podcast app do us a favor leave a five-star review because again it really helps the show so uh put a little treat in our treat bags would you a little halloween uh, for you trick-or-treat baby do it up and for all updates on the show to find out what's going on you can follow us on social media we're just about on everything at movie dumpster on the twitters the x's facebook's uh youtube everything so that's where you can find out updates on the show well well, Angela's having another party, but not really. <laughs> again. Uh, just like the again, last one. A question mark, yeah. I mean, she she kind of crashed a party. There was a party, at least in the second one. See, the, I want to talk about the second one real quick. Sure. Because... I didn't go back and rewatch that one for this review. Same. I did fully intend to. Okay. Instead, I watched like seven Friday the 13th movies. Well, that'll do it. Uh, probably, honestly, the better choice. <laughs> but I did go back and listen to our episode just to get the refresher okay, to see what good. the hell I thought yeah. uh, two or three years ago, whenever that was. Didn't love it. Um, I, didn't, I, I don't love it either, mm. but like, it's not horrible like no. it's, it's not the worst it's not the worst movie ever and as far as sequels go it's it's not that bad it's just not the flavor that i want from night of the demons and when you again if you watch these in succession you watch night of the demons you're like wow that was fucking great and then you watch two and you're like eh. it's it's a little too um how should i say cheesy for me uh, the second one it's, especially is very cheesy that's what i mean oh, okay, it's, it's yeah, very yeah. like self-aware like with the fucking kung fu nun and shit and like that's fine whatever like can ask for the lord kicking at well sort of yeah kind of yeah She's and got that water gun that looks like an uzi and and bobby jacoby <laughs> fucking throwing doing a dust till dawn bit right. the meet the apple gates connection of course <laughs> Uh, you know, he, he turned, the, the roach clips come out. He's attacking Angela. I wish we got that scene. He's, he's making it uh, across with the with the uh, with the mandible, yeah. not the mandibles, the fucking the claws. Yeah, parry, whatever, whatever you call them. Throwing holy uh, water <laughs> balloons at fucking the at the the priest turns into a zombie or a, whatever they not zombies. They're like demons. They're but, demons. Yeah, yeah. Demonically uh, possessed. Uh, demonically people. possessed people who are susceptible to holy water. Yeah, in the second one at least. And, yeah, and one scene in this film. Again, I guess. Kinda. Again, you could play fucking ballroom. Blitz and, and Dennis Leary's there and, and George Clooney's in the corner and they're all fucking fighting the same yeah. thing. Vampires and demons, whatever, man. Exactly, exactly. But you're right. Like, it's, I don't really like it, but there's a lot to like about that film. The effects are really good. The story, even though I think it should have just been in Whole House and I think you probably feel the same, uh, it, it's it's not for me, but at least they tried. Well, that, that was that was the thread that I just lost I wanted to get back to. Sure. Because, because like, <laughs> they're in a Catholic school, then... Yeah, St. Rita's, Saint, right. St. Rita's, and then, like, uh... You know, Angela's sister is going there or something. Mouse, and then, yeah. 
and then like she's influenced by Angela. But then well, they there's need... that weird dream shit where right. she's kind of like a hag all of a sudden. Yeah, but then they need to go to Hull House, release Angela. The lipstick. The lipstick, right up the old hoochie there. Yeah, that, that's where right the... up the old jingo. <laughs> the snake stuff starts coming in. <laughs> yes. They try to bring that back there's in some this great, one a little. There's some great effects in, in the second one. But, uh, that but yeah. snake monster at the end is crazy. But looking. like, it's the end of the demons too. Just put it in the fucking house again. We went we went from the, the Catholic school to the to the Hull House, then back to the yeah, Catholic school, then forth, back to the Hull House. Yeah. And it's like, all right, it's, it's too, much. too much. So that gets remedied in this film. Where it all takes place at Hull House. Yeah. Now, the director, Kevin S. Tenney, from the first movie, right, writer-director of the first movie, mm-hmm. comes back um, to write this film. They don't want him to direct, direct it forever because it's a Canadian production. So they yeah. pick out, the, the Republic Pictures picks out a new uh, director, and it's all uh, Canada-based. Okay, okay. Okay? But they got Kevin to come write the screenplay for whatever reason. Right, well, because nobody... So story goes, sure. uh, Kevin Tenney didn't uh, uh, wrote the screenplay because they couldn't get like a good story out of anybody for Night of the Demons three, and he was like, "Hey, what if we did this? What if we made uh, kids who rob a liquor store but don't really love rob a liquor store and need a place to hide out?" Which is a pretty great premise. Um, if you've ever seen Cthulhu Mansion, it's like the same fucking premise. It's the same thing. Okay. Like well, except like. Those kids, like, take a magician hostage in his own house. It's like a whole fucking thing. It's pretty good. Or even, like, Spookies. It has the same vibe Mm. of that. Not that the first one doesn't have it because it has, like, the old house and all the kids are partying in it. But, like... punk element to it. Specifically, like, uh, people who are trying to hide out or, like, have robbed something or just pieces of shit, rather. Grotesque. Actually, that's oh, yeah, there kind you of go. not the same kind thing of, at all outside of that kind one of. caveat. Linda Blair, but yeah. baby, yeah. yeah. That movie. Very disturbing. I like Hence that Hence the name. A lot, yeah. But that's a good, yeah, that's a good one, too. Yeah. So, yeah, he pitches his story, and Republic loves it. So they're like, hey, come in. You're going to write the fucking screenplay. Awesome. But we're going to have Jimmy Kaufman direct it, a motherfucker who's never directed a horror thing in his whole life. And, like, deliberately did not watch the first or second Night of the Demons movie to get any of the flavor. He had no idea about any of the mythology or the lore or anything like that, which is kind of imperative when you make a sequel uh, to a film. I, yeah, I mean, on on some level, because the first and second one are so different, okay, but, but like, it follows Angela the same in the rules? house? But it follows I, the same I, rules. I, I, sure. Sort of. Kind of like someone gave him the cliff notes because he has some yeah. elements from the first film, a couple <laughs> lines from the second, but well, beyond that, yeah, there's not much reference. Well, the at lines all. are from Kevin. Oh, he wrote well, the right, script. Yeah, that's true. And the and the caveat for Night of the Demons two is how she gets out of Whole House as she gets inside the lipstick. The lipstick, and yeah, it's a whole thing. They never even really go into the whole river thing, which I remember that pissing me off at the time. Yes, we, they kind of just like, yeah, it's a thing, but don't overthink it because it kind of breaks the plot, which is pissed me off about yeah, the yeah. second one. But anyway, the the third one we're getting Tenny, but not his vision, mm. right? And a big part of the problem with this movie, like one of the big production problems with this movie is they they were going to shoot in Canada. So instead of shooting at the original house from the first movie, and I think they used it in the second movie. If they did, they used it sparingly. Because I remember a lot of reused shots of hallways and stuff like that. But again, didn't rewatch it, they, so they, I don't really remember. I, they might have not used it in two. but he def- They tried to match it a lot better in that second one than this one. Kevin definitely way. wanted to go back and use the one from the first movie. Because it's like a character Kevin's in smart. itself, you know what I mean? Where it's like this big, looming, scary mansion. Um, yeah. And it's fucking creepy as hell. I mean, I think we talk about it on that first episode. Like, those shots in the hallways of them like gliding through it. And it's just very spooky. It's a great haunted house movie. And so... They're shooting in Canada, so they're shooting. They're shooting in just some fucking rando house, so it loses all of that atmosphere yeah. and uh, and that spookiness. You know, it's just like, oh, it's Linda's house. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah, it looks yeah. like it's like a fucking seaside cottage or some shit. It. I, I don't always want to come off as negative on mm-hmm. independent film because I don't know if this actually is an independent film, and I'm, I'm just prefacing it's, it's it. Paramount and Republic okay. Pictures. So I mean, but I, I would say lower budget for the, sure. The only reason why I'm even prefacing it that way is because this feels like an independent film that wasn't getting 
It didn't get that injection from a studio. It didn't have anyone like really standing or like a producer being like, hey, maybe we should like wrap this scene along. Maybe we should cut that. I mean, according to Kevin, which I think you're going to go into, there are a lot of scenes cut. Uh, So maybe there's stuff in there that I didn't see that would make this flow a little better. Mm. But I'm sitting there like, man, like even just just you talk about the house. I'm like, was this made for sci fi? Like, (laughs) I don't know, man. Like we were talking about it's a big downgrade even from that second one. Yeah, we were talking about this before we started, and we uh, I'm sure it's somewhere, mm. but I didn't see it looking at Wikipedia or IMDb, but I'm pretty sure this is direct to video. We were that trying sa- to look it up, yeah. I, it's, it sounds about right for I, Re- I, Republic Joint. To my knowledge, this Blu-ray that just dropped is like the first time you could find this film easily in a while, because good luck finding this online anywhere besides YouTube, which is someone like cropped it Ugh. in a horrible zoomed in way yeah. just to get it past the copyright. Three is one of the hardest ones to find, like you said. Yeah, Even yeah. on tape, it's like the most expensive out of the three. Oh, really? For whatever reason. They didn't I make a lot of them or something I don't know like if they that. made a lot of them or like, I, I don't really know the reason why. Um, but... Uh, Shout, just so you brought it up, Shout had put out uh, a brand new Blu-ray of 2 and 3, which we have sitting right here. Um, And of course, it looks great because Shout usually does a great job when they restore things. I saw they put the first one out again, too. So was that just a re-release, I guess, at that point of the last uh, disc? No. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Well, I picked up... um, I think it was 4K. I don't know what the last one was. I picked up the 4K Uh, of Night of the Demons from Shout because it's fucking Night of the Demons. It's one of my favorite movies of all time. And I was like, okay, 4K. So I got that, too. Okay. Um, I did not pick up two on Blu-ray because I don't know if I really need it. I mean, eventually when it's on sale or something. That, yeah, that's the one you get in the $5 yeah. bin or you, you might get the 4K of the other, well, at least <laughs> on the first one, but you're getting the second one's the Blu-ray, this one, maybe the DVD if you well, had the option. Well, I paid full price. For, well, I also have two on DVD. Oh, okay. Um, I paid full price for the Blu-ray of three because uh, I don't have it on DVD. Sure. And uh, there's a whole bunch of extra special features on here. Uh, yeah. And we were talking about it, so I was like, okay. No, it makes sense. It. So you mentioned Kevin Tenney. Yes. Cutting this movie up. Uh, the one quote, I think it was an IMDb, and I don't even call it a quote, it's just a line saying that he was very unhappy with the finished film, and it was something along the lines of scenes were cut or something to that effect. Okay. Doesn't really elaborate. So so Jimmy submits his cut to Republic Pictures, and they're like, oh, no, no. <laughs> Jimmy Coffin's like, what? what's wrong with this? It's perfect. Oh, no, no. Add that scene of Angela <laughs> floating in there, damn it. <laughs> Is that what they said, Joe? Uh, that's not what they said. I mean, they probably did because it's in there. They brought Kevin in and be like, "Dude, can you fucking <laughs> fix this shit? Like, can you fix this? Do something with this, yeah. please." So, I guess let me tell you about the original director's sure. cut, which is included on this wonderful Blu-ray disc uh, from Scream Factory, I, Shout Factory. I would love to see that. Um, so, so dig. It's the director's cut, but in Canada, it was scored by a different guy. Oh, really? So on the U.S. release, it was scored by Dennis Tenney, who did uh, the score for oh. the first Night of the Demons. Uh, Kevin's brother yeah, comes yeah, yeah. back to do the score, um, which is all right. It kind of suffers the 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 Richard Band thing, the late '90s Richard Band thing, where like in the '80s they had like full like yeah, no, yeah, they had, <laughs> the late '90s were not kind to them. Well, what I mean is like Richard Band's got a full orchestra. And mm. then he goes into digital with like digital That's what I'm orchestration, yeah. and it's just like it, it kind of takes the edge off. They of, thought they were doing like they they were getting with the times, but it actually yeah. made it worse. And on I some pref- level, I prefer so so the, the the soundtrack in this is the the Night of the Demon Square, but it's like orchestrated, but it's like digitally orchestrated. It is, yeah. And I would love to hear it actually orchestrated, but I love the first one score so much. Like it, like that one's it's like perfect. That's how you do the synth. And it's fine. Well, it's Should have just did it again to give I it the agree. same feel. They couldn't use. The, I guess Shout didn't get the the um, rights to the Canadian soundtrack hmm. and that composer soundtrack. So for the director's cut of this, that was that was tracked with the Canadian person soundtrack is non-existent. That's kind of crazy. So there is no music. There are well, not no music, but every part of that has been muted. Hmm. Right. So when you watch it. There's no music cues. Mm. There's there's not there's not really there's no there's missing sound effects. He saved your life tonight, didn't he? I'm giving you the chance to do the same for him. There's missing effects, so it's like a work print director's cut. Might as well be, yeah. yeah. Huh. All, it's not finished in yeah, terms yeah, yeah. of like optically or or sound mixed or anything like that. So when you watch it, it's weird. Uh, but the way the the biggest takeaway from for me for the director's cut was that. 
there are whole scenes that are intercut with the movie. So like in the beginning with the cop, that's like intercut with the kids driving. It's not one full scene. Oh, which yeah. kind of actually makes sense in on some level, maybe not from like a viewing standpoint, but from a timeline standpoint. Timeline standpoint, fine. Because but the timeline gets really fucked towards the end of this film. I know, but what and and what happens in the director's cut I can see is that like it's coming together. Mm. All these events tie up into the middle when they finally converge, when the kids get to Hull House. But like I mentioned earlier, this guy had never seen the first two movies. So in the beginning when she meets the cop, he fucking, she is dressed in like a baseball cap and like a crop top and nobody knows why. And Kevin's like, oh, I guess he dressed her up like that to fool the cop, question mark. (laughs) And it's like, what the fuck? And then later, Jimmy has her in the black dress with like a witch's hat on because I guess he thought it was like a witch costume. Because he didn't understand. Because he had no context for why the fuck she was wearing the black dress. I guess I keep accidentally saying Kevin as far as the director's cut Jimmy. and all that. It's Jimmy. But I just because we were talking about how Kevin was upset with all the scenes bent and cut. But then where's the tenny cut then? If Is that what we so, need, the fucking so, S tenny no, cut? Well, that's wh- I wanted to get that all out of the way okay. because that's the cut that was handed over to Republic Pictures is the director's cut. And they were like, fuck this oh, shit. Oh, okay. I see what you're saying. So they fucking called Like Kevin. the mall rat situation. <laughs> the first cut with that horrible intro. Well, that's just a couple cut scenes. This whole uh, fucking yeah. movie is recut. Sure. Um, so uh, Kevin goes in, takes a lot out, and shoots a lot. He has to like reshoot Amelia Kincaid. Wow. Because she's not in the black dress. Like, all the shots of her in the black dress, like in the movie, he had to go back and fucking reshoot her in the dress. Is that bonkers? I-, I thought that was so crazy. Some of that kind of adds up. Like now that I'm like playing it back in my head, like why certain things don't gel as well yeah. as other uh, parts, rather. So it's rescored, recut by Kevin and and uh, Dan Duncan, who cut the first Night of the Demons. So it hmm. does have some of that flavor, but yeah. like overall, it doesn't have the feel because Kevin's not directing. It's the other guy nah, yeah. who has never fucking seen Night of the Demons. <laughs> so how could you give it that flavor? You know what I mean? Yeah, and, and if the only returning actor is Amelia Kincaid, who was... I mean, she actually wasn't phoning in the second one. She actually plays it pretty seriously, but this one I think she's kind of phoning in, and I wonder if that's because she had to redo a lot of shit, and she was like, well, fuck this. I did this once already. I'm not really trying this time. Maybe. She's not bad, but... Maybe. I think she's fine. She's fine she's with a fine capital F. This. So, yeah, that's about it. Like, as far as, like, real behind-the-scenes stuff, so it was kind of a shit show with that. There's also a TV cut on this hmm. disc that I did not watch because I didn't have time to watch it before the before we recorded this, but I am curious to dive into that and see what that looks like. It's probably going to be un- insufferable because like all I, if it's a TV cut, I'm sure all the good stuff is cut out of it. <laughs> that, that's the one when you find out that Abby is actually Angela's <laughs> long lost sister. <laughs> oh, Abby it's looking good, she man. She can get it. She can get it straight up. Even as a cat demon. Sign me the fuck up, dude. I mean, that's that's when they really, you know, that's her <laughs> that's her sexual awakening. She's a fucking cat in heat in that scene. Sign me up. So I guess the last thing is Roy Nyrim on effects. And they range from good to really bad. There's nothing spectacularly awesome in this. Like, when you think of Night of the Demons, you think of, like, I mean, Steve Johnson, motherfucker. Steve motherfucking I, I mean. Johnson on that first one. <laughs> but even the second one's really good. Even, like, yeah, with that the snake thing, like I was saying, is the, great. The snake thing is awesome. The face I makeup think, on Angela's pretty good. Yeah, yeah. And the and the fucking hands, that tr- or boobs that turn into hands. hands yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, th- that's all great stuff. Mostly the CGI is really bad in that film, from what I remember, but the, the practical effects, for the most part, were really good. Yeah. Again, from what I remember. Now, the reason why they're not so great in this movie is because the director, like, didn't give the effects people any time to to, 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 to prep this because, guy sucks because this Jimmy fucking what was this guy's name Kaufman Jimmy Kaufman this guy's fucking fuck you Jimmy Kaufman <laughs> but like that's that's the kind of the essence of yeah. Night of the Demons you watch the movie to or, watch or horror people, movies in general yeah but you watch Night of the Demons specifically to watch them turn into fucking demons and rip people apart and do all kinds of crazy shit to them you know what I mean? What's a transformation scene? Uh, don't worry about it. Just get through that I effect quickly. Put that stupid devil makeup on that kid from fucking Are You Afraid of the Dark? <laughs> you see that button in, in Adobe Premiere right there? That like swirl effect? Just click on that a couple times. Oh, that'll God. that'll do it. Oh, God. We'll get to it. All right. We're going to talk about the fucking terrible... Listen, if you don't have the money for CGI, especially in 1997... There's other ways to do that. <laughs> yeah. Practical effects? Maybe. You could, could be. Just don't do that. Don't do what they did. Horrible. Horrible. Do you want to do you want to plot crunch this right quick? 
And then we will jump sure, into this. And then we'll sure. jump into this bad boy. Uh, basically, it's Halloween night, uh, much like the last two films. Uh, and there's some teenagers. Some of them are uh, uh, going out to go to this fucking school dance. Others are just looking for trouble. Put it that way. Mm. And uh, they get involved with this shootout at the Quickie Mart. Uh, they think they accidentally kill a cop. Accident in major air quotes. And uh, they end up at Whole House and shit hits the fan because Angela's still hanging out there. And uh, they basically are now trying to figure out how the hell to get out of Dodge. Although they take their sweet fucking time. Now, also, there's this B plot. They they insert. I swear to God, it was almost like shot after the rest of the film was done with this cop, uh, Durhurst or what? Dewhurst. Oh, Dewhurst. Uh, who is kind of following the case, but really is just like a bad, like, Agent Cooper insert where he's talking on the radio the whole movie. Anyway, so that all converges at the end. It's not even like Columbo or anything. Like, I kept thinking of Ali Oates the whole movie for some reason. He is like a fucking dime store George C. Scott. And I wish yeah. that George C. Scott was alive to be in this role because that would have been incredible. There's a lot of things I wish about this film. <laughs> So does Kevin Tenney. <laughs> yeah, well, clearly, yeah. I wonder if Mimi Kincaid feels the same. Probably uh, not. She made a lot of money on those pet psychic books. Uh, she sure did. And like, this is kind of her, this was like her meal ticket. I mean, oh, yeah. as far as acting went. So, uh, so yeah. So we open up. It's Halloween night at Hull House question mark because like it's like again it looks like a it looks like a little tiny house like a two story house. It's I think not I, this big giant mansion. I, I think I saw Michael Myers walking around there. <laughs> Oh, it could have been. Because yeah, they keep changing that house, too. It's I'm like, all right. Probably. I get that they didn't get the original location again. I don't think the second one did either. But they at least kind of tried to make it look like an old house. This thing, it's like, this looks like it had work done on it, like, yeah. recently. Yeah, it's brand new. Yeah. It's all, like, perfect inside. Like, like somebody just, like, left it. Uh, even if there was a horrible, again, the effects are bad in this film. It's a but fucking, like, it's a Halloween Airbnb is what is what it is. Well, yeah, but I'm saying I would have taken just even like the worst shot because I'm expecting it at this point of yeah. just like, oh, it's an old house and then like a poof of fucking smoke and now it looks new because it's magic or some shit. I don't know, something. Well, Kevin said that he wished he knew that they weren't going to use the original house because he would have wrote it in the script like it was oh. demolished or something and then a new house was built on the property and then a family was All killed right. in the beginning and then we could have fucking kicked it off. I gotta give Mr. Tenney that one. Yeah. That's not bad. Yeah. So uh, they didn't tell him, unfortunately. Well, he's a fucking great writer, man. And yeah. like, and like, the, the the truth of the matter is, like, he should have been behind the lens for this one because, like, I feel like a lot of it is lost in translation. Uh, because there is a good movie here. Like, there's script, a lot of good ideas, script yeah. wise, you know. Um. So so yeah. The fucking, I also have a problem with the proximity of like the gate to the house because it's like only a stone's throw. <laughs> Depending on the camera angle, yes. Yeah. Or when it's convenient for the plot. Especially later when I'm like, why don't you just run out of the fucking gate? You did it. You already did it. Right. Because the first, okay, so they have the gate and yeah. it's like the stone wall, like in the first movie, but it's different. Like Joe just said, it's further out. In the first movie, it's actually kind of close from what I recall. In which one? Uh, the, the 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 fence in the original film. I'm, no, it's 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 not that close. That's not okay. No. Uh, regardless, the second or film- Where they drive in is not that close. Right. Okay, you're right. Yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah. The second film, I don't even know if there is a wall because, again, it doesn't really matter by the end of the film. I think they just get trapped in the house is the whole thing. Yeah. But this one, it's like they straight up show- a fucking bad CGI portal when the cop car goes through it. Ugh. Again, like, reboot. 1998. I thought it was a Lawnmower Man portal, honestly, based on some things that happened later in that, this movie. That fucking car's going to Outworld, man. And you would think that this is almost like a force field that you can't go back out, but then later the movie's just like, no, that's not how it works at all. I don't need to see it. No. Just, we know it's there. Yeah. Just, he goes there. through it, he, he looks in the rear view, and now it's just fog. Oh, huh, I thought there was a gate there. No, we don't get that. He's like, no, I thought there was a gate there. Or, yeah. oh my God, it's all brick. That never happens like in the first movie. Anyway, the fucking cop goes up there. Uh, Larry. Larry. He goes up there, and like, I don't even know why he's there. I think it's just because it's Halloween. They don't. They know kids are going to fuck around a whole house, so they just stick some cop there for the shit duty for the night. I guess. He goes in there, and... Uh, well, here's a noise. Uh, Maybe. Or something. Or something. And he comes in, and of course, uh, he's greeted by Angela. She's coming down the stairs. 
I live here. What do you mean you live here? She says that to like everybody and they just buy it instantly. Like, oh, okay. Cobwebs, broken furniture nice, everywhere. Nice place you got. Yeah, but it also doesn't look like a rundown piece of shit either. I mean, it's a nice house with like some broken furniture. It still looks kind of shitty. I don't know. Not as shitty as the first movie. But... I guess. Oh, also he's unit 66. Uh, is that like a 666 joke or Pro something? Probably, I... probably. He's in there and they have some kind of like, ex they have some exchange and uh, well, he gives the plot dump from two. He's like, oh, oh that's yeah, right. those kids uh, came here five years ago from St. Rita's and they all got butchered. And it was conf I got confused because I was like, this isn't the same fucking house. And I'm like, did they go to the house? And I'm like, this doesn't look like the same fucking house. Mm, that's supposed to be. Yeah. Anyway, she ends up like killing this guy. She like she, now she has telekinesis in this film. Well, she, she lost her machete from the last one. She <laughs> left that at the old house. Oh, the sword? Yeah, or whatever that was. <laughs> the demon sword? Yeah. Ritual? Whatever the fuck that she was doing? She kills a bunch of people with it in that last movie. She, she fucking Clint Howard's them up straight up. Yeah. Oh, yeah. oh evil speak. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. her and, yeah, her and Clint Howard are fucking levitating through the air with their swords cutting people's heads off. <laughs> That's what she does. She, yeah, you're right. She yeah. used the te telepathy to grab his badge and like takes it off the guy's shirt yeah. and like throws it at him like a ninja star into his head. <sighs> okay. This guy's Again, fine. It's fine when I'm like, okay, yeah, not you're not gonna show the first kill. Okay, sure. Yeah, no, I, I get it. Wait a second, you didn't show the second kill. Or the <laughs> didn't third? show the third, fourth, fifth, <laughs> didn't show any fucking kill in this whole the, damn movie. Uh, there's two good ones. <laughs> All right, well, you'll have to remind me when okay. we get to them because I don't remember seeing any red this entire <laughs> film. But yeah, we do this the zoom in uh, on this fucking thing, and then <laughs> I thought the credits in the second film were bad because it was like just like Halloween stock footage of like a town with with uh, names. This is like Dungeons and Dragons bad CG. Uh, this uh, is uh, like uh, Mortal Kombat Annihilation Animality bad. I thought I was watching like the or unmade worse. fourth sequel to Halloween Town. <laughs> This is like, there's like Jacob Marley flying through the fucking air, like with these, like these ghosts with like glowing eyes and it's just looping. It's it, just looping. It, it looks like a fucking uh, bowling alley animation. Oh, yeah. Like oh, when yeah. you get a strike. <laughs> exactly. And they're flying in the yeah. whole house, which is actually looks more like the actual house or like the Adams family house than the one in the film. The first movie. It actually might be literally the house from the intro from the first movie. They're echoing the they're whole trying thing. To. They're, they're digitally echoing the first movie intro. Not that music. Uh, well, it is. It's the same music. Oh, is it? Yeah. Okay, maybe it, I it's the same music, that. but it's like shitty. It, it it's orchestrated. It's not great. Okay. Okay. Um, it's this it, like it's insane to me. It's always insane to me when like a movie that's fucking ten years older, twenty years older. Yeah. Oh yeah. Right? What is that? That's ten years, isn't it? It's about, like about ten. Yeah. Yeah. It's literally ten years from the first movie to this movie. Eighty-seven like to to ninety-seven. Ten times worse yeah. intro. <laughs> yeah. But like. This is the new this is the new technology and it's like traditional animation will fucking beat oh, this wow. any day of the week because that first one is so good yeah. it's creepy and awesome with all the ghosts flying around and the house and it's just so well, this, that doesn't have skeletons on the wall Joe yeah. this doesn't have flames shooting out of the ground this at has, you this has honest to goodness 3D fucking house of the dead ride like going upstairs and it, it looks like shit I don't even like who said this was all right, and they should have spent the budget on the effects instead of this fucking terrible intro. Also, before I forget, before we went into this abomination, we, we get zoomed in on Angela's abomination of a fucking CGI face. I thought that was Mouse at first, and I'm like, wait, what's going on? And then it comes out I and wish. it's like, no, it's just a shitty-ass fucking digital Angela, and then she turns into a demon, question mark. Yeah, and then we get this fucking intro with these ghosts flying yeah. that just goes on for a solid two minutes. It's, it's a long time. So then we're in the car and we get uh, introduced to uh, Vince, Nick, Lois, Reggie, and Orson. Right. Uh, our ragtag group of assholes. Literally, there's not a likable. I mean, the only likable people are kind of like Abby, Abby and, and Holly. Holly that, that and are Nick. broken off on the side. Of yeah, Nick, by the end, I kind of like. Nick has a whole fucking Sal Romero arc. In this movie, it's the same character. <laughs> it's literally Sal. It's I, literally I, Sal. Hey, I don't want to sound a broken rec like a broken yeah. record for anyone that's like watching these episodes sequentially, even though they're years apart from each other. Yeah. But like the last film, I forget the name of the character, but there was a character, blonde hair, but was basically Sal with the denim, less egregious. I was definitely like overreacting on that one. This guy looks like looks him. like 
does a bad impression the entire film of him. But he doesn't have that, you know, that Sal Romero, like, cadence to him, uh, you know? Yeah, I don't know, man. Like, Reggie, okay, the stereotypical black guy, like, literally does nothing the entire film. Uh, he, <laughs> something happens to him that causes him to do nothing, but he does nothing. Yeah. <sighs> and then Vince is, again, it's a bunch of stereotypes. The hothead asshole redhead guy... Who, who doesn't know when to, you know, stop pushing buttons. He's got the over-sexualized girlfriend yeah. who fucks who's, it. Who's also crazy and likes yeah. to see him, like, fucking hurt people and shit. And then his brother, I think it is, Orson? No, Orson is, Orson's like, their, their, friend? their friend who has the van. That they who push drives around. Him around. Now, Orson is Christian Tessier, or Tessier. Uh, I think I it's know. Tessier. He is the redheaded kid from laugh the laughing in the dark episode of are you afraid of the dark he's the fucking kid who steals oh. zebo's nose he had it coming then. He sure did. With this fucking Freddy Krueger <laughs> uh, haunted mask crossover he's fucking rocking. It's a fucking devil mask. Dude, it's a Freddy mask, and I'll tell you why. Because later in the movie, when he gets demonetized or whatever the fuck you want to refer to him as. <laughs> not demonized. Demon demonized, not demonetized. Uh, That's he, what happened to us. Uh, yes, but anyway. Uh, <laughs> he... Uh, He's talking like fucking Freddy. It's a bad Freddy impression, in my opinion. And I'm just like, what are we even doing? It's 97, by the way. Yeah. When was New Nightmare? Uh, uh nine, 94? Okay, so a little 95. late. But still, I'm like, all right, we're really doing this right now. But I'm getting a little ahead of myself here. It feels like an Are You Afraid of the Dark episode, to be perfectly it honest. It, it's Canadian. It feels, like, it feels like Canadian television. A little bit, yeah. yeah. But uh, before we get to Abby and Holly on the side of the road, I do want to mention the scene when they first uh, meet each other at Abby's house. Yes. Oh, my God. Which is definitely a callback to that first movie. But it's, like, done poorly. <laughs> Where she has the kid brother run in with his friends. It's <laughs> always a pervy kid brother. But it's, like, a really little kid, like, four-year-old, five-year-old. <laughs> and, like, they don't, like, comment on her yabos, but she's just like, ah! My boobs! And there's three of them jumping on the bed. She's, like, buck naked. You see her ass and everything? Oh, you see the whole package, yeah. dude. Yeah. They just run out. So Kevin wrote the scene because to harken back to the first yeah. movie, but it was supposed to be the pervy little brother who was like in the in the first movie. Wow, but it's just booby sis in the closet or whatever, scaring his sister. But this time, it, he was like spying on her friend who was naked, not the sister, and he gets caught. So instead, she does come in and start taking her clothes off too, she, like at the Top drop of a bottom. fucking hat, dude. They're both fucking bare ass naked. I guess women do this. I don't know. Again, I've never like said, "Hey, Joe, I'm gonna come over and uh, strip totally down nude and Jimmy, to put on my Halloween costume." Jimmy, Jimmy, it was in Kevin's script, and Jimmy's like, "I'm gonna fucking double down, baby." Uh, he was going hardcore on the whole tits and ass angle on this one. <laughs> he, he was trying to fit in as many tits and asses as he could on screen. So the reason that there's little kids in it, even okay, even yeah. Kevin was like, "This is a little." distasteful <laughs> because those are the fucking director's kids jimmy kaufman's kids and he wanted to put them in the movie so he was like oh there's a good spot for it completely not understanding the context of the scene you know you know like 10 or 15 years later probably probably like 15 hey dad you know so uh i finally saw that movie you had me in yeah. uh none of the demons three yeah can, can, have you ever wondered why I'm obsessed with tits and ass, Dad? Have you ever wondered? Has it ever, like, popped in there I got why a I'm a sex addict? Yeah, I got a pornography problem, uh, Dad. My dick's raw constantly. <laughs> I can't get the image of that woman's ass out of my mind for it, 20 years. I've been chasing the dragon ever since. Uh, I, it, anyway, I mean, it's, <laughs> it's a <laughs> weird, weird thing that they're just like, Dad, they run around on a bed. They run out like, ah, you brothers, ah! <laughs> can we even chalk them up to the pervy little brothers? Like, from elves and it's from it's comparable. It's not comparable, right? It's so in and out. Yeah. It's literally just, they run around on the bed, they run out, they don't even make a comment. No, not like nice they're, fucking tits or anything like young. that. They're too young! Yeah, well, yeah, they're, they're children. Yeah. It's it's just in there for a callback, and they'd be like, hey, let's see these women naked. Yeah, Holly comes in, we're introduced to Holly, yeah, right. who's the cheerleader. There's this weird dynamic between them, because it's like, well, Holly's the, the popular cheerleader chick, and, uh... Abby's, Abby's. Abby's the mousy friend, shadow, they call her. And I'm like, I don't know about you, but I'm fucking taking Abby out, not Holly. Well, they're doing the thing, stereotype yeah. of like how many Oh my God, movies. she wears glasses. glasses. She must be a nerd. 
nerd. Right, exactly. The hottest nerd out of the <laughs> fucking group. Right, well, yeah. they do that on purpose yeah, on some sure. level because of what happens later. That's fine. Put her in the cat makeup, too. Yeah, I told you, I'm, right. I'm, well, I'm all about She's it. Abby, Tabby. I don't, I don't know what they're oh, going for with that. She's a wild cat. Sure. Well, yeah. We'll figure it out. So the characters converge because their car breaks over, the van's driving down the road, they're going to this fucking, they're trying to find some fun, if I recall. Well, they're going to the, they're going to the school dance, Holly and Abby. Right. They're getting dressed for that, so they go out for that, and they break down. But the kids in the van are just, they're literally cru- cruising around for pussy. That's what Reggie says. He's like, I oh. need a bitch that's going to suck a golf ball through 20 yards of garden hose or some he shit. He brings that up again later. And it's like, okay, so you guys are cruising around for girls and weed and what? Candy. I, I guess. Beers? Smokes? Beer, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, they're not planning a party, so it's not like the first movie where they're like, shit, let's go to Hull House and have a fucking kegger because we're the bad kids, quote unquote. <laughs> Um, no, it, it, they, they come across Abby and, uh, Holly on the side of the road because the car breaks down and they're like, oh, come on in, uh, we'll drive you to the dance, no problem. Holly doesn't even seem too keen on it at first, but Abby is like, has this like weird, like, I want to get fucked undertone where she's like, no, no, come on, come well, on, she, oh, I'm cold. She wants to get fucked by Vince. Well, she likes she, Vince she's for like, some she likes Vince. Well, he's the bad boy, man. He's such an asshole. Looking like a fucking member of Allison Chains up there. Yeah. Also, like, I get, like, you could just fuck whoever you want. It's your prerogative. But this guy is all over Lois this entire time. Like, come on, Abby. Don't be that person. Yeah. You know, you don't want whatever that other chick's got, dude. Yeah, you don't want what Vince has got either. <laughs> no, but yeah, that's true. Don't. So they get in the van. Yeah. Um, and they take off and they they end up going to like they stop at this quickie mart, which is this is like the crux of the movie, right? This is the big kickoff. Yeah. And again, like I want to I want to note that like a lo- so I mentioned in the beginning Night of the Demons 2 has a lot of like cheeky ass humor in it. You know, like I kick ass for the Lord. They don't say that, but like the nun with the ruler and the, uh, yeah, and the yeah, priest yeah, yeah. and the water balloons and all that bullshit it's that kind of humor with that character. Yeah. This for all intents and purposes, everything's played straight for this oh, movie. Yeah. Like it's supposed to be dramatic and scary. I, I'll uh-huh. give it that. It definitely with like the, fixes the tonal issues from the last film. Yeah, with the black comedy of the first movie. Yeah, like a la, you know, uh, hey, I bet you if we try, we can try to get Jay Hard again. You know, shit like that. You know, which is like funny, but it's yeah. also dark humor. And sure. the, the characters are like, oh my god, get me the fuck out of here. Uh, but this is pretty fucking serious. They go into the to the quickie mart. And Reggie thinks he's going to fucking get some beers with his brother's ID. Yeah, it looks nothing like him. No. So he starts getting questioned by the the uh, the clerk. The, the yeah. clerk, yeah. And he's like, this isn't you. He's like, get the fuck out of my store, you piece of shit. And he's like, and he's like, yeah, well, your mama's so fat. What is this? Because they're doing yo mama yo, oh jokes in the car. You want to talk yeah. about a fucking through line? It's the yo mama through uh, line. If you were confused, if this came out in the 90s, here is your fucking <laughs> evidence, folks. The, the your mama jokes. But like your mama jokes were like old as fuck. No, I know. I just remember yeah. they were like big in the 90s I also. mean, I remember saying them, but like, sure. you know, your mama's so fat, your mama's so dumb, yeah, blah, 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 yeah. blah. But for whatever reason, oh, that's a plot point in this uh, movie. Yeah, but also like you got caught. The guy's not instantly calling the cops. Maybe just get the fuck out and try a different liquor store at that point. Instead, they're like arguing with them. And then Vince gets all heated. He's staying. He's standing his ground. And then Reggie goes to reach for his wallet to pay for the oh, smokes because yeah, yeah, yeah. he can't buy the beer. And this fucking guy pulls out a shotgun and he's like, and has him at gunpoint. Vince then take ends up taking the shotgun from the guy. And these fucking cops walk in, and yep. and he turns around and I guess the clerk like grabs Vince and by then the he, back, yeah, and he shoots the fucking cop and he flies out the fucking window. This was so intense. This was really well shot. I feel oh, like yeah. this whole sequence. And then there's just a shootout. There's like a rookie cop and he's just shooting everybody that he sees. He just shoots Reggie. Fucking of all right people. Stu- he does not even the one with the gun. No, he just shoots him. Just shoots him. Yeah. And I'm just like, oh, okay, Reggie, of course, gets shot for no reason. Reggie gets shot, but he then he almost shoots the fucking Holly. He almost shoots Holly oh, for yeah. no reason. Nick has to, like, run and grab her yeah. out of the way. And then, like, th- the part about that that is, like, not even hilarious is the wrong word. That is, like, bizarre. And I understand, like, this is probably realistically... Yeah. Probably the most realistic scene in the film, honestly. This is probably what would really happen if this went down this way. Because then they they eventually, there's a standstill. They have, there's enough time for them to get the fuck out of there. Yeah. They get in the van. Well, fucking Nick fucking drops the other, the cop. Oh, he, he comes in and punches, punches him, him out. Yeah. You're right. And they get the fuck out of there. Mm-hmm. We'll come to find out, well, you still shot the guy out the window, but he's wearing a flak jacket, so he's totally fine. So he's not dead. But I was like, holy shit, they killed a cop. Like, 
I thought that was I thought that was a like pretty, pumpkin head or something. Yeah, it was a pretty good plot point for this movie. I did not expect that. It, I hadn't seen this in a long time. Oh, okay, so, yeah. yeah, it's uh, it's a it's a really good setup. Part of me is like, what the fuck movie am I watching? But I'm I'm there for the ride because you never really know where you're going to be taken. Uh, it was dramatic enough for to keep me interested yeah. until it didn't. But right? We'll, yeah, we'll yeah, get yeah. there. <laughs> they got you, they get you sucked in quick. Yeah. Uh, so that they're booking it. They think they killed the cop, Vince. Again, I mentioned Pumpkinhead a second ago because the character in Pumpkinhead makes me think of Vince a little bit, where yeah. he's basically taking the control of the situation because he's got the shotgun. Yeah, he's 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 the one in charge. He's the fucking hothead, and you're gonna do what he says. Yeah, we I we didn't I didn't kill that kid. I can't go to jail. <laughs> you kind right, of thing, yeah, you know. Yeah. And if you're, you're all coming down, you're all going down with me. Exactly. Yeah. And uh, they make this point to show like. A couple times now, but now especially that things are fucking the, have hit the fucking fan literally. Uh, Orson keeps getting bossed around, but now Vince is going to drive the car because now you know he needs to be in charge because everything's sure. going to shit. And now Orson's like doesn't look too thrilled about how everything's turning out, and he's like fondling a fucking handgun. Well, in he his ends pocket. up pocketing the fucking cop's gun. He, oh, like, is that what that it. is? Yeah, because okay. like he's been being walked all over. So like that's his. I thought he had that already. I must have missed that. Detail. No, that's like his arc. Okay. So now okay. he's a tough guy because he's got a gun and he's gonna take control of the situation. And be like, you can't make fun of me anymore, Vinch. Uh, okay. Okay. So that. Okay. That yeah. makes more sense now. But mm-hmm. they go. They go to Whole House. Yeah, before we get to Whole House, real quick though, uh, we get introduced to Lieutenant Dewhurst, who really doesn't have any fucking thing to do in this movie. Movie and it's kind of like okay, you got um I forgot the actor's name, but he was in a he was in a bunch of stuff. sure yeah he's good. I think, I think he was in the Shivers actually. I forgot his name and I didn't write it down. Do Hurst. I, I mean he's got he's like a nothing character. He he's got a pretty funny thing with with like the the the, the magic stuff, which is kind of yeah. funny. So we get to Hull House and they hide out there and it, what happens? What do you think happens? <laughs> Uh, they meet Angela. Uh, instantly, just about. <laughs> well, well, first, what's his face? That's the shotgun, because yeah. Abby's like, I think this place, it's it's not a haunted, it's possessed. Oh, that's what I wanted to say. Okay. So Abby's in the van, and they're like, fuck, whole house, Jay. No, they don't say that, but that's the first one. Um, <laughs> Why do I hang out with you wipes? <laughs> <laughs> but, like, uh, she, I love how the kids know the history of Hull House in this movie, and mm. Abby's the one to be like, Oh my god, yeah, it's not it's not haunted, it's possessed. And there's a river that the underground right, river that's it. marked by the thing and like that's so the spirits can't cross over and fuck, we're going there on Halloween. We're not you can't do that. That's when and then uh Lois is like, "Oh, what? Like on Halloween night cuz the this the the, yeah, the, the, the the veil is thin and they right. can walk, you know, through into our world." Well, they go through the fucking they veil, sh- that they orange sure veil. They sure do. So they get there and the other thing is again, like Reggie shot He's fucking bleeding out, and like half of the van is like, we need to take this guy to the hospital. But like the other half, which is really just Vince and Lois, are yeah. like, ah, uh, no, we're going to whole house. Fuck him. If he lives, he lives. If not, oh well. Fuck Reggie. They don't care. Uh, survival of the fittest. Yeah. And so like Abby and Nick are kind of like, all right, well, like we can't really go in there because this yeah. guy's still bleeding out. Yeah. And then Vince like literally has like the shotgun in Nick's head, like, let's fucking go. Dude, we're I, going in there, dude, buddy. Nick's got some fucking brass balls, dude, because he's like, go ahead, shoot me, motherfucker. What are you, what are you gonna do, tough guy? And then he, he ends up clocking him with sure. the with the with the uh, butt of the gun. But like, I just they get in a few scraps. He they he beats the shit out of him at oh, one yeah. point. Yeah. But I always I also love this too because like they go in mm. and Abby's still going on about uh the demons and the possession and blah blah blah. So fucking Vince like shoots a hole in the wall. And he's like, I guess that'll wake him up or whatever. And then we cut to fucking stock footage of the like, first cue, movie. Cue that stock footage of that face, I, that I mean, demon face. Dude, that's, that fucking face is cool. And like, I know. One of the best shots from the first one. And they really got the mileage out oh, of the that. The POV of it coming out, the, the furnace. The furnace is so cool. The fucking crematory. Uh, and it's coming out again. And, you know, it does the whole thing. What's weird is that they show Angela, like, floating yeah. through the hallways from Doesn't the first make one as well. Sense. Yeah. The makeup's not the same. Also, the fucking like, house the isn't the house same. House isn't the same. Uh, I will say they did a good job of matching the shot when they finally do have the POV go into the new location. It yeah. looks similar enough. I'm like, okay, you tried. It's fine. Uh, and then, you know, they do, oh, what's that smell? Oh, what's that? I guess the wind. Which is also fun, too, because that's like from the first movie. Yeah. Demon shit. Yeah. It's not possessed. It's just repossessed. So then, like that's Joe weird. was saying, he shoots the wall, Vince. And now it's like bleeding like Ghostbusters. Oh, yeah. So then for some insane... Or Evil Dead 2, actually. There you go. For some insane reason, Orson's like, I'm going to be tough now. I'm going to be the one to investigate this. And like has like his eye just about up to the wall. And this thing spurts blood right in his face. And like, is he possessed? Does that count? What does that mean? I don't know. Easily influenced for sure. 
I, yeah, this guy's unstable. So what they were going for in this, or what Kevin was going for in this, was like Angela is supposed to be like, oh, I'm a hostage, but like also fucking with them. To like throw them off. To like throw them off, yeah, which she kind of does a little bit in the movie, but it never really hits home. For Has me. she really? I guess like towards the end when they're kind of like, oh, Angela, you, we got to go. And but even when she's downstairs and she's yeah. like, oh, no, you know, don't kill me or whatever. Don't shoot me. Right. Yeah, that's true. I don't know. This movie just again, you said the guy didn't watch the first two films. Mm. And maybe that's why a lot of this just doesn't make any sense. Because uh, Angela is so all over the place in this fucking movie. Yeah. And, she, and again, she had to be fucking reshot three right. times. <laughs> so like even if you had a good take that first time, you will never see it. <laughs> Well, you watch the director's cut. Uh, well, right. It's With fucking the baseball stupid. Cap on. It's just Amelia Kincaid in a fucking baseball hat. It came from the Cardinals game. Um, it's like a comfort colors. So then Angela, speaking of, starts coming down the fucking spiral staircase. Yeah. And Vince is like, oh, who the hell are you? Like you just said, he's got the shotgun pointing at him. And they're all like, kind of like, it's a, it's a bit of a tense moment. Just because of Vince really shouldn't be. She ends up influencing Orson. But again, he's standing behind her with the pistol. Yeah, but it's not like or behind uh, his friends. Rather, Vince, yeah, it's not like as clever as the smoke going into like Lenny Quigley's mouth, and it's not as it's not even as clever as the fucking lipstick gag from the second no. one. It's she's just kind of like you're possessed now, like looking at him, and he's like, "I guess I am." Hey, why don't you guys go search the house, and I'll watch them with the gun. Yeah, but also there's like a moment there where it's like implying he's gonna like blow Vince's fucking brains out, and then it's like, "All right, well maybe I won't do that." Well, I and, think he's also like, trying to okay. he's also trying to take charge of the situation as well. A hundred percent. And they're just like, "Give me the fucking gun," and Angela's like, "Hehehehe." <laughs> so. Like uh, Vince, Vince, uh, Lois, and Nick go upstairs, and they like make Lois and Vince like they go into him... the Michael Myers house again. Yeah, they're they looking sure... for fucking oh, those cameras. Oh, yeah, there they are, dude. Danger Tainment's all over there. Yeah, it looks like the same damn it, set. It really does. So Nick's like looking in the rooms to see if anybody else is there. Meanwhile, Vince and Lois are like fucking on the staircase. Okay, so <laughs> this this is their stigmata scene for this film. I guess, dude. Because they're fucking on the stairs, or they're like making out to the point where like, I mean, her shirt's off. He's touching her boots. Oh, those tits are fucking out. But like, then she's like hitting on Orson now because he got the blood sprayed on him or something. And like, she puts this fucking music on. Yeah, it's not like, it, so it's not Bauhaus. It's certainly not whatever fucking butt metal was in the second one. I don't even, I can't even explain. It's like New Age, it's maybe? It's got like an Afro-Latin yeah. beat behind like, if I'm remembering yeah, correctly. No, yeah, you're right. She's like, it's like it's like some like metal cha-cha kind of music. And I'm like, what? It, so she doesn't do anything elaborate no. like the second movie or definitely not the first one. Absolutely not. She um, just, <laughs> Orson. All of a and sudden. he's like, ooh. And ooh, there's like ooh. that there's like that one shot where she's just all in lace at one point. She, right. She gives a little bit of her butt and stuff. Uh, yeah, you get, the, I don't know. you get the butt shot. Millie was still looking good in 97. Yeah, sure. Yeah. It's only 10 years later. I know. But uh, she's got Orson, and you, you get the side angle of her tongue coming out like the snake a little bit. Oh, yeah. That was cool. Wait, wait, wait. You're missing the whole first part of that. It's... Well, I was leading up to that, because oh, first you get okay. the tease of the tongue, and then she fucking gives this pistol a blowjob. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, he's like... Yeah, I want you, but you need to be able to suck a golf ball through a gar twenty yard of garden hose. So she fuck Amelia Kincaid takes this fucking gun, and fucking, she earned her money. She Black Christmas uh, area code fellatio on this fucking thing, dude, because she takes it and she's just sucking this fucking gun off. I also wonder if she had to shoot that twice. So the first one, how how did it go with the baseball cap and oh, everything? Yeah. <laughs> dude, she gets a. Did mouth she turn the cap around? She makes this fucking gun come. Bullets, bullets yeah. in her mouth, and then she spits the bullets out in his hand. It's it's a pretty fine scene. Like if this was a better movie, that would have been yeah. like, oh man, that was good. You know what? You might be right because then maybe that's when she sticks her tongue out. Because then she kisses him. Yeah, she's like, give me the deep tongue. And yeah, it's deep, all right. You see this fucking uh, lubbedin tongue come out of her mouth, leprechaun tongue. She does the same shit in the second one. Well, not the same kill, but the long tongue shit. Yeah, yeah, but. This is more like Freddy Krueger, though. Oh, she gives this guy the fucking Xenomorph special, dude. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah. It fucking goes through the back of his head and like explodes, yeah. and it looks pretty cool. No, and that, it does. And that kills okay. It's it's fine. It's yeah. one of the. It, I forgot we actually did see that one. You're right. Yeah. While that was happening, Holly, Abby, and Reggie ran out to the van, and they're like trying to hotwire the van to get out of there. Right. And they could leave. There's nothing stopping them. And then like Holly's like, "No, I gotta get Nick." I get it, but also like. 
just get the fuck out but of there. But then she runs up and then sees a cop car, and she goes over to the cop car that was. And there then in the she beginning. just fucking disappears from the movie for a long time, She's trying to get in the cop car. Well, we find out later, yeah. or according to the information you gave us, yeah. uh, that apparently was an editing issue. But well, she's in the exact same spot half an hour later when Cop Larry's ghost or demon shows up. Yeah, seriously. It's like, okay, I guess that scene just got moved for whatever reason. But like, Holly's off to the side just so Abby can get abducted by Angela sure. because she's like in the car instead of being like, Abby. She's just like, Abby, don't go in the house. I'm over here. Like, she could have easily yeah, ran no, over and right. grabbed her. So Abby goes inside. She leaves Reggie by himself. Yeah. Guy bleeding this out. This fucking poor bastard yeah. bleeding out in the van. Can barely breathe. Uh, Angela comes up. She's like, come with me. I'll show you where the Holly is. They <laughs> run out of the house and, like, go to the whole house barn, question mark. Well, that was the one set that kind of actually looked like it was haunted. Yeah. So they're yeah. like, all right, let's go over here, I suppose. Yeah, let's, oh, let's, oh, by shoot, the way, Shoot Abby, more in there. Abby, you, uh... You're a sexual being, right? You like that guy Vince, that piece of shit inside? Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Unbutton that shirt a little. Come on. Kiss me. You could be sexy. <laughs> and she basically just starts making out with her. And like for a second there, Abby, because again, she's the character that kind of knows the thing, sure. which is a little bit of a weird twist with her and Angela there. But uh, maybe I'm overthinking that from the first film. But she's like, oh, I can't do this. You're evil. And it's like, ah, no, it's already too late. I already kissed you. Not even that she's evil. She like throws her off and then she goes full demon. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And she's like, oh, you know, she, she does the voice. She looks nothing like the box. No. It's it, the makeup actually isn't bad, but it just doesn't look like the demons from the last two films. Um, It looks more like the one from the first one. You think so? Yeah, yeah. but it's not as good. The lighting doesn't do it any favors. No, it's just stark on yeah. their fucking face. It's like, mm. We also don't see what happens immediately with this. Uh, she kind of comes after her and it cuts, which I'm okay with because it's setting up the next scene. I, I guess she blasts her with a fucking ball of light or some shit. Because <laughs> Vince, like, energy. Vince like sees it out the window and this oh, yeah. giant light is coming from the barn. So he's like, the hell is that? Invaders from Mars? <laughs> <laughs> it's a fucking McPherson tape. Yeah. Uh, so he goes out there and she's in the barn and now she's fucking sexy cat right. costume she, lady. Brand new wardrobe, fucking her makeup changes, to a different are hanging cat. out, dude. She's ready to fucking hit it and quit it. All right, exactly. She unbuttoned every button on that, yeah, on that uh, sure. shirt. Uh, so she fucks the shit out of Vince. She grabs Vince from Lois, who's, who's in the middle of, also there's a scene in between there. I was going to say he's in the middle of fucking Lois, but yeah. he's like grabbing on Lois, about to insert it and, and Nick comes up to him. Yeah. I don't even know what he's doing. Is he grabbing the keys or what? But they start getting into a big fight. Well, and he then, goes to grab the shotgun from him. Oh, okay. Yeah. And then it leads to him fucking Abby, and she's like Amazonian fucking his ass like hard as hell. Like, you know oh, what? you like that, Vince? Oh, yeah. You know what's fucked up about that? She's a demon now. She and, should just and, kill and him normally, if you go by the history of normally the Normally what happens is, yeah, like, you, fine, you'll fucking get it in there, but they're going to turn into a demon while you're fucking him. I, I no, want, she I, was just, like, fucking I, hot Abby the whole time, and he gets to fuck her and then leave. I mean, he still dies, spoilers. Sure, but, but not by that, not that way. Yeah, he I'm lasts like, till the end of the fucking movie. I wonder if they they changed that, if Kaufman was like, oh, Kevin has this, like, thing where, like, they're having sex and she, like... Her boobs turn into arms and it like chokes her. Now that's ridiculous. No, that's Just ridiculous. kill him later with a with a random <laughs> pistol shot. Uh, that uh, anyway, we'll get to it. But uh, yeah, you're right. He fucks or she fucks the shit out of him, and then Lois comes in and they just finished her. Like he's like putting his belt on, he's like, and oh, she's like, "Stay here or whatever." Yeah, she's Watch like, what, her. "What the fuck is this? What the what the fuck? What what the fuck happened here?" And Abby's like, oh, yeah, meow. <laughs> he fucked me in every hole. <laughs> meow. Yeah. And it's like really like, then all of a sudden Lois is like running around. She's like, oh, oh my God. Oh, she's my God. Like, she's oh like, my God. you're a whore. You're a bitch. You're this and that. She turns into a fucking, Abby turns into a fucking cat monster. She looks like the fucking sleepwalkers. Yeah, she does. You're right. And she's like meowing with red eyes. And she like slashes her chest. He, she, oh, there's, yeah. There's a really yeah, cool yeah. effect with the fingers where the claws come out. But she slashes uh, Lois, uh, Lois yeah. and she runs back to the house. That's when she starts running around panicking. She runs into Angela, of course. And she's like, you're a snake. Remember in the beginning when you had that snake puppet? Well, now it's on your hand, and it's going to become a fucking snake like the cursed bite. Yeah, yeah well, it's going to basically meld into your hand. And then that weird shit where it's like she lays down on that bed or that table or whatever, and it just, like, bites her? It turns into a fucking rattlesnake. Right. I, I'm telling you, it's like the curse too, the bite, when the guy gets fucking bit mm. and his hand turns into oh, a I snake. Oh, I saw monster. that. Oh, it's great. And she's like, 
finger in herself with the with the, with snake, the snake tongue. Thing. And Kevin Tenney was like commenting, and he's like, I don't know why he made her touch her vagina. Like, was that the actress like on set? Like, it's kind of funny, and they I, kept it in. Like the whole thing was supposed to be like the snake turns into a snake and like bites her face, and that's it. And then there's puncture marks, and like it's all ballooned up when she's like a demon. That's not what happens. Maybe they should have made that more clear because A, they don't actually see her get bit in the face. She just and has a snake hand. B, I, I guess like her face is a little bigger in that next she, scene, but I, you no, first time figuring no, that out. She looks like a Ruby's Beetlejuice with a fucking snake hand. Her hair's like a little bit down. That's it. Side note, as all of this shit is happening, Dewhurst is just driving in his car. <laughs> and he's like, huh, well, they weren't over there. I wonder where they could be. What do you think, Ida? What do you think, Ida? Hey, you ever been to Lost Vegas? I love magic. Did you know that? I like to call it Lost Wages. <laughs> <laughs> so then like the boosh. He's trying to figure it out, and she's like, well, you know, I haven't heard from uh, Car 66 in a while. Car 66, where are you? And then he's like, <laughs> yeah, right, her monster walks in. Yeah. He's like, ah, 66, a whole house. Somehow he knows that's that's where it is. Harmon, would you tell Angela to stay out of my laboratory? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Grandpa's, Grandpa's there. Grandpa's there. Oh, Al Lewis would fucking lay the smack down I, on Angela. Dude. I wish that was the movie we were watching. Uh, instead, no, he somehow is like, yeah, a whole house. Okay. Okay. Oh, by the way, uh, oh. Mr. Dewhurst, you know you're retired now. It's after midnight because you retired exactly at midnight. I'm going to make a citizen's arrest. Why is this guy... I, I, I think it's because he wants to prove that these kids are innocent or whatever. Well, that is it, because he's saying, well, oh, they didn't actually kill anybody. It's a misunderstanding. This just turned themselves in. We could This get guy this. grabbed them. This guy right. kind of pulled the gun on them first. They were defending themselves, yada, yada, yada. And that's like his last... Act of uh, as a cop, as a cop, it's his you know his his paying it forward so uh, that he can retire. I I again I would love to see if that was in Kevin's original uh, script, or if that was a Kaufman add on, or or if that was a studio thing because the movie wasn't long enough because this movie's only a, an hour and twenty minutes, eighty three minutes. Yeah, yeah. Uh, where I'm sitting there like I I actually don't mind this character. It's just it's shoehorned in like a motherfucker. And then, like, they're like, well, we need him for the final scene, so now we need him to figure it out. So he's there now. You know what I mean, though? We'll, we'll get to it, because I want to talk a little bit more about that and why he doesn't okay, okay. fucking need to be there. So Reggie's in the van, and now right. he's a victim of Angela. She, like, seduces him to come out. Oh, wait, 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 That's I'm sorry. The... I'm sorry. Holly sees fucking Orson first, who's dead on the ground with the fucking mask on, and this horrible- Right, when he goes Freddy Krueger. This horrible CGI, like, morphs his fucking face into, like, a demon face. Um, Starts firing off those bad one-liners. I'm telling you, man, it was a Freddy reference. It had to be. I mean, all the demons usually have, like, one-liners. They do. But he's, like, especially not good. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway. They th at one point, they throw holy water in his face, but they don't even comment no, it's on not it. holy water. What is that supposed it's to be? It's thinner. It's either oh. paint thinner or gasoline, one or the other. I think it's okay. paint thinner. I was definitely yeah. overthinking that one then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So now he's a fucking demon running yeah. around who's like a devil. He's got like a devil face. There's him. There's the cop. The cop who's like Holly. Did he give you a piece of his mind? Look Joe. at my piece of my mind. Hey, hey Holly. He's, he's that the worst. That guy's fucking. He's the worst. He's just playing it like super funny. Jokey. Jokey. Like yeah. overly jokey. Like it doesn't fit the rest of the movie kind of. Anyway, I don't really care for him. And uh, then Reggie's in the fucking car, gets taken, gets called by Angela. Now he's walking away with fucking three bullets in his chest. He's the fucking Mr. Oranging around all the place, all over the place. Also, been bleeding for at least in movie time, probably an hey, hour. It hurts like a son of a bitch, but it takes a long fucking time to die from it. I learned that from Harvey Keitel. Uh, I, that is a good point. Yeah. Because then Angela also realizes that and says, fuck this, and just turns the van on magically and runs him the fuck over with What the it. fuck? But Orson Dean Oh, yeah, Orson's in there, yeah. Orson Devil is in there, and he runs him down. You know, he's doing that joke from the beginning of Freddy Part 5, oh, Nightmare God. Part 5. The truck part. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. So he gets run. Don't dream and drive. Exactly. <laughs> then we see this dummy get run over. I guess that's the second one we get to see. It's a demon. Yeah. It's a night <laughs> of the demons three. TM. Also known as Demon House in the UK. We forgot to mention that. A <laughs> demon house. I don't know why they ever thought it would be anything but night of the. Maybe they couldn't get the license. Are the other at ones first. called Demon House? I didn't see that. Oh, I don't know. Specifically, the Maybe. version I watched, the, well, the logo comes up and it says. Oh, demon it, com house. it comes up Demon House. Yes. Interesting. I don't know why it was the UK version from my the little bit of research huh. I did. 
My wonder, point being, what, when was it ever not Night of the Demons 3? When did they decide to be like, actually, well, this is Night of the Demons 3? Well, sometimes they did, international cuts have different names and mm. stuff like that. But like, I'm curious if that cut's any different, or is it just the title? I mean, based on everything we've talked about so far, it's yeah. the same. Yeah, Because well, it's the only yeah. version I watched. Well, there yeah. you go. So, here, here's where it gets fucking ridiculous, because now Holly meets the cop. So... So Reggie gets fucking right, ran over and shows killed, up, killed. Right. Cop shows up, starts fucking uh, ski bopping all over the fucking front lawn to this chick, and Holly's trying to run away from him, and uh, well, she, she ends she ends up running through the gates of Hull House. When the fuck, like, like this is like an Apple Gates egg sack fucking reveal <laughs> where I'm like, I did not expect that. If, go watch well, the Apple Gates episode to know what I'm talking about. There you go. But like the uh, in the first movie. The demons have built, like, right. had the wall. They walled it all in. So That's you can't, what I'm saying you earlier. Can't, you can't just run out the gate. You have to get over the wall that has barbed wire on it. You got to really try. And it's high. Like, ah, you yeah. can't jump in and get over it. They this only one, get out in the first one because there's two people and they really break their ass. And they really break their ass. Um, Second one, they just get rid of that idea. It's the house it's, traps them. Yeah. More or less. Question mark. But this one, the gates are just open. Anybody could just fucking mosey on in. And... Holly, or leave, apparently. Holly literally runs out. She runs off the property over the fucking water, the underground stream. And the cop runs and hits it, hits it and fucking explodes. Which but doesn't I, die for some uh, reason. Again, then I'm also like, okay, there's a lot of things happening at once that my brain's like, all right, well, if that happened, then this. Oh, well, no, okay, well, then yeah. this. Because it's like, okay, well, that was this cop, demon, ghost, dead? Yeah. No, he comes back later. Right, and mind you, the fucking van... Is right there, right next to it. Here's the gate. Here's the van. Here's the house. Oh, here you go. Uh, and let's yeah. just say like, for it's this, it's like it's like <laughs> gate, van, house. Like it's there's fucking a hundred feet maybe between that's the house was, and the and the gate. And that's like an estimate, it, yeah. even if it was. Yeah. Unless you just physically are unable to run or walk, I don't know how. Like if you just can't, like yeah. you physically can't. There's no reason why you couldn't just fucking run for like. 20 seconds and be out of there just go if that it's a, it, if you're physically capable you should have been able to get the fuck out of there i'm sorry unfortunately no one figures this out sean if you were in hull house and everybody was turned into fucking demons and i didn't know where you were and i could get out i'm getting out I, I'm and then i'm gonna get help i'm pretty sure the baby from baby's day out could have figured this out it would have just crawled and it would have been okay I wouldn't be like, oh shit, my friends are inside. Come to find out, as long as Angela doesn't know that you're near the portal, you could pretty much just get the fuck out yeah, of there, no problem. Leave. If you she come finds go, out, yeah. Yeah. you're kind of screwed. But yeah, man. Yeah, you're right. She, then she comes back in because she's got to get her friends, which, again, I do understand. I'm not trying to be like I a total moron. I understand why she comes back. You don't have to set this up again. You've already shown us. They like to keep setting it up, Yeah, Joe. but you've already shown us twice this fucking portal. They'll show it, it again with the cock, and you showed it with the fucking uh, van. We don't need to see this part. You don't need to have her leave and then come back. And, and guess what? You're going to get it again when Dewher shows up. <sighs> when he comes in. You remember that? Don't forget mm. that. Well, you know, they, they paid that intern all that money to do that effect of when, Ugh. you know, when it hits this frame, you got to make it look orange and you got to make it look like it's a puddle, you know, like lawnmower man, remember? I guess. And then they're walking away from the van at that point and like yeah. Reggie tries, because Nick shows up, Reggie tries to grab me like, oh, there goes Richie, or uh, Reggie, excuse me. Well, he throws the the, the, an, the hand down to grab yeah. his leg and he misses. Yeah. So they go back into the house and I get they're looking for Abby, but they don't know she's a cat demon yet. Exactly. I think that's what's up. Right. Um. And fucking Orson Devil comes and he's like, he's like, your mom is so stupid that she had you and you're never gonna get out of this house. <laughs> and then Nick like big boots him in the chest. And then Michael Myers is like, <sighs> and then uh, what's his face comes in he's a roundhouse eating a rat? gets is him. He eating a rat? He might be yeah, a giant one. Yeah. Uh. But yeah, they're like they're running around this fucking house and it's just like they're going into this room and then they're hiding and then they're going into this room and then they're hiding. Yeah, they and go then into it. They go in the attic, which is kind of cool set piece, I guess. Yeah. And like Orson's, they like kiss Nick and Holly. And they're right. like, I always, I wanted to do that since I saw you the first time in algebra class. That's so sweet. But okay. he only went once. Yeah. Because he's like his whole thing is that he's like doesn't give a shit about school. He's Sal Romero. Yeah. Straight right. up. Right. Exactly. So, uh, yeah, Orson Devil shows up again. They fucking throw uh, paint thinner in his face. Right. He, like, melts, kind of. Kind of. Again, I thought it was holy water. And this culminates in them going to leave the house, and Dewhurst is, like, there at the door, and he's like, hey, kids, how you doing? Uh, which, happy Halloween, trick or treat. Yeah. <laughs> and they're about to shoot him with the fucking shotgun. Oh, yeah. And he's like, hey, you want to see a magic trick? Uh, give me the gun, and uh, we'll magically leave. 
So he like puts cuffs on them. I I, I have to do this. Sorry, kids. Uh, I guess. Okay. Vince got his ass kicked before by Nick, but he oh, yeah. he ends up like finding the gun that Angela sucked off and puts all the bullets back in, like the revolver or and whatever takes it is. Angela hostage, which is a good. It's a good gag, but like it doesn't fully. It doesn't yeah, it, it's come a good, to fruition. It's a good gag because you're sitting there thinking, oh, oh yeah. this is the next chick he's going to bone because that's all he's been doing the whole film. Well, that's how they kind of set up. He's like, ah, I've been looking for you. Oh, yeah. And then, no, it's to put the gun to her head. to be like, this is how I'm getting out of this. This is how I'm getting out of this. But yeah. I thought that that's a good thing. That's a, that's a fun thing to play with. Sure. But, but even Holly's like, wait a second. Isn't she a demon? And they're like, hey, Vince, get away from her, you bitch. Yeah. So he's standing there with the gun to her. And then they're like, ah, oh, no, like, we don't want to do this. Like, that cop, he had a flak jacket on. He's fine. Like, yeah, we got to, like, go down to the, the station. Like, there's going to be paperwork. You're probably in trouble. You didn't kill anybody. You, you like, don't, you're not going to kill anybody, son. You didn't kill anybody yet. Right. So yeah. then Angela's like, ah, you believe him? He's a pig. I don't trust him. And he's like, yeah, why should I believe you? And he throws Angela down and just goes to unload on the fucking cop. And then, of course, Dewhurst has to respond well, with his own fire. He's going to get shot. Uh, shoots him in the chest and the eyeball. Dude, the fucking eyeball was so good because it just like pops yeah. and just blood squirts out. I thought that was pretty good. It is pretty good. But that's the only, really, the other one you get, really. Why is that one of the only on-screen kills, and why is well, it not a demon doing something? Actually, there's two more that are really there's good. There's one more. Do, right Hurst and Angela, we still got to get to. True. But I'm just like, I, I don't know. Anytime that's in a movie, I don't just like it. That shouldn't be an automatic, like, oh, that's bad because it's a horror movie. But I'm just like, I want to see, like, weird demon shit. I don't care if this guy gets shot. That's, the, like, so whatever the to problem me. With the weird it looks demon, good. The problem with the weird demon shit in this movie is that it's all fucking CG, because True. without skipping a beat, Angela turns turns into a fucking demon. More CG face transformations. No, no. Dewar shoots her in the fucking face. Oh, and with her, the shotgun. No, face, Sal does that. Sal, or Nick or whatever Nick. he's called. Oh, his fucking head, her head blows apart and then it like reforms oh, man, with it looks this so terrible bad. CGI. And it's just like, fuck me. But th there's a good line from Dewar because he's like, oh, neat fucking trick. <laughs> and then they like run away. Because for some reason, like, they, they can't, again, like we've already talked about, they can't figure out just run out the fucking gates. Even though Holly knows how it works. Run out the fucking gates. Run out the fucking gates. They keep going, they go in the van. Why? They're trying to drive the cars away. And it's like, just run outside and you're safe. Right, because the cop car won't start or All you something. have to do is cross the threshold and you're safe. So then they finally. It's like, right there. Well, they decide to finally do that. And then, well, the sun's coming up soon. We can just run. Okay, we're going to run. So then they're going to run towards it. But now Angela and all the demons have surrounded the van, so they can't do that now. So she's like, well, actually, uh, I want you, Holly, because you're a virgin, and uh, you have, uh, you know, the stuff I need. We've never mentioned this once in any of the other films, but, yeah, I need your soul, and I'll let uh, the cop and your boyfriend or whatever live. Man, this, so, like, this is the part where I'm like, Fucking really? Like, like I'm waiting. Doesn't make any sense. I'm waiting for this to culminate, and I'm like, I want to see what the fucking cop does. Did, did did he have? Does he have a history with Hull House? Was he there? Right. When somebody was killed there at some point, did he work the case of the last kids from '87? You know, none of that. He just is familiar with he's, it because he lives there. He's just there. Yeah. Right. And the thing with Angela is like, uh, why doesn't she just kill them all? It's the same problem she, with the second film. She where just he... wants she just she wants Holly because she's a virgin soul, and she's like, "I'll let them go." But there's not even like a double cross where she's like, "Come on, Holly," and then kills them anyway, which makes yeah. sense. Like, it's a problem with the series, and it's kind of similar to the stepfather in some respect. But mm. although I I think the stepfather series as a whole, even though I don't like those second and third films, actually is better, mm. uh, just comparatively. Uh, cause the, the decline's different. I'll talk about it at the end in my uh, final thought. Yeah. But, uh, where was I going with that? To make my point about the stepfather, yeah. it's similar where it's just like, they forget the rules from the previous movie as they get deeper into the series. Whereas like stepfather two, it gets sillier, but yeah, it's kind of Terry O'Quinn. It's not the same in my opinion, but it's kind of there. Third movie, totally different character. Maybe there's elements from those first two films peppered in because it is still Stepfather, but it's not the same thing. It's also logist. I think you're, are you saying because of the logistics of how the Stepfather operates? And, yes. And yes. he just like totally the takes rules, a shit in the third the one. The rules, the semantics, yeah, yeah. similar to this film in the sense yeah. of every film, like, that doesn't need to be the same. Mm. But Angela's powers just drastically change from film to film. And it's just like the first movie. Yes, yeah, she's a demon or possessed or whatever. It's a demon. Don't overthink it. It could kill you, but it doesn't. Whatever. The second film, they established that it's like, yeah, even though she's killing people with that machete, she could kill you whenever if she really wanted to. Yeah. This movie, okay, you're going to do that again, but you wait till the final fucking 10 minutes. And be like, By the way, I kind of just let this all happen. I could have killed you whenever. 
uh, but I'll take your soul instead. It's just like a weird thing to, to randomly be like, yeah, you were in the palm of my hand the whole time. Like, I, that should have been way more apparent if that's the way they were going with I it. I don't fucking need it, Sean. I, like, I don't know. I hope I'm making sense, she's but just it's just a, too much. She's just a fucking demon, and you're there, and you're gonna die, and you're going to hell. They're that's it. They're treating her like she's Beelzebub or some shit. Like, she has some all-powerful, like, magic. And like, okay, fine, but like, that's not how it's presented at all until the end when it's like, you know, I could, I could kill you whenever. Right. Well, that one, I don't know. Maybe that, I'm overthinking that. That one. De- what's funny about all of this is that that one demon in the first one possesses Suzanne first, like Linnea Quigley. Right. Yeah. So like, that's not even like the fucking wow, the right. mother, the mother body. You when know you what I'm saying? Think about it. Yeah. I mean, they do reuse that head, the monster head again. Which they show cool, it on the house on the side. They show it a few times, which I thought is pretty yeah. neat. I think that was a I think that was a Kevin thing that sure. he put all that stuff back in there to make it make sense, but uh, why would you? I I just can't. I'm having a, I have a hard time looking past it because it's like we're at the climax yeah, yeah, and it's yeah. just like even the characters don't know what the fuck to do. No, they're, they're like they're like, I'm like confused watching. Yeah, it. they're they're like she's like okay, come here with me. You're my whatever my soul that I need. My brood. Virgin, question mark. Okay, brood, let's go into the house because it's almost it's yeah. almost daylight. We the need to go back is, to hell. It's glowing like yeah. poltergeist. Yeah. And they're all walking. It's like a dance number. Like, ah, da, 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 <laughs> they walking fuck, in. Oh, yeah, da, da. They fucking, th- yeah, they fucking fuck right off. They parlay they, they right into the house. They yeah. um, Then the lights shut off and Angel's like, all right, Holly. <laughs> and then do hers to Nick are like, ah, what the f- what the fuck do we do? Like, do we just leave? Do we <laughs> Nick's get like, high? Ah, oh well, it was a bad date. Yeah, 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 tough yeah, luck. Shit. He's ready to just book it and do hers. Is like, ah, I got a trick up my sleeve. I know some magic. Yeah, no, this is fucking the plan is get her. Okay, yeah. this is the plan. He tells Nick. He's like, he's like, I'm gonna create a diversion. Right. You go get Holly somehow in the fucking demon house when there's like ten of them in there. Well, she's standing out front of it. They're all out front yeah, of it still. Right. Yeah. And they're banging on the fucking windows. Because they can't get out now because they've already crossed the, the, the threshold. I don't know. It's so like, like go back to hell. The Muppets or something in I, there. Oh, Meet yeah. the Muppets, <laughs> the Feebles. We, on Meet no the Muppet demons. show tonight. Uh, boom, 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 boom. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so, d is like, all right, you know, you're a supernatural being there, aren't you, sweetheart? You want to see a magic trick? I bet you haven't seen this one. He's like, I put this fucking... The handkerchief on my hand and I say hocus pocus and then he takes it off and he fucking pops out a switchblade and stabs, stabs her. Angela right in the stomach he might as well just had a middle finger out because it does nothing so she's stunned they get Holly and they're walking away and they're just taking their sweet fucking time to get across this they're like huh, that was that was a bitch ain't wasn't it well I, I guess we I guess we'll just leave now okay so then they walk slowly away, and this is the other fucking good kill because Angela yeah. punches a fucking hole through Doers and rips his heart out, and like makes him like he like puts it in his face. It was cool. Could have used that cool. an hour earlier and set up the idea that yeah she could just do this shit to you again. Third movie, maybe I should have been thinking it, but when it follows none of the rules of the last two films, sure it's cool. He's dead. He gets Ernie Hudson, like Leviathan. I think I think we finally came to the verdict that he does oh, die at the dead. end of that. He's dead. Uh, he's floating dead, which is still stupid. I, I like to think he's alive. But uh, yeah, it is this weird, like we need that final kill, that stereotype in horror movies that kind of yeah. just didn't want to go away for a while. Unceremoniously died at the end of that movie. It, also a character, well, Ernie Hudson, but yeah, yeah in yeah, this yeah, film yeah. it's like, this character didn't even need to exist in the first place, so I don't even really, like I kind of like this guy because he's a little funny, but that's why. That was my whole point before talking yeah. about it because I'm like, what is this purpose of this guy? Just he has cut. a purpose. It's just stupid. It, it's just to die. Yeah. Like, oh, well, we get some backup at the end or something. I, I wonder how much of it was dependent on, like, a shooting schedule. I don't know. I don't know. I'm very confused. But uh, so this long is, story short. This right. is also a cool part because now Nick and uh, Holly are running to get out, but she's grabbed at the last second by Angela. Now, the sun is coming up, and it's a cool thing that she's being she's being pulled over the threshold right. of the underground stream. And that portal is like oh, a flickering or whatever. Yeah, and it's really fucking cool because Holly's like holding her hand and her fucking hand is melting and the bones are coming oh, yeah. out of it. Fucking Angela's head is this really cool practical That's effects. the best effect in the movie. The fucking head opens and splits and her whole body comes over and like guts are all over the ground and uh, her bones are on the ground. And I thought that was fucking sweet. Um, that's where the budget went. And then that's the end of Angela. Like, the, no more, right? I, I That's the implication because the right. dust, her bones turn yeah. to dust and it's blown and away. And they're gone. Man, this so so, so so 
This movie ends like three times because like, okay, you're done. We're done, right? We killed Angela. No, they sit down and they wait until like morning, morning. Oh, yeah. There's no cops. They don't call anybody. They don't go back on the premises or anything. Well, well, Dewhurst is like, well, you know, you guys weren't on the security footage because you were in the van or something. Yeah. Even though they definitely were in the car. Yeah. Or in the in the quickie mark because the fucking snot Sal jumps and grabs her, but yeah. okay. Yeah, but how, they, they have to be on the camera at the end when they run out the door. I don't know. He says they're not. And Bullshit. it's like, well, you guys could just leave and uh, basically not be associated with this and uh, don't sweat it yeah. before he gets his heart ripped out. Yeah. As they're slowly walking out, that's what he's telling them. I don't think that's going to work, but sure. But uh, just, just like the end of the first one, like they're not just being like, yeah, our friends were murdered by demons. Uh, yeah, Roger and uh, Alice in Wonderland, you're under arrest. <laughs> but like, th so they sit there until morning though, Sean. Yeah, no, I know. Like, like contemplating like The sun's and, and, been up and, a while. And, and lamenting about what's happened. You know, with the first one, you have Raj and Judy like walking home and it's such a good ending because they're just like wiped the fuck out and then they pass the guy from the beginning oh, and then yeah. that, that, that's the a great ending. Yeah, the razor blade guy. That's a great ending. But like this, they're sitting there and they're like, huh, well, I guess, and Nick's like, all right, I guess we can leave now. And then Judy gets up and like, hold on a second. She closes the fucking gates to Hull House. She puts a stick in it and like a fucking, like making a crucifix. And she's like, God bless all the dead bodies. And Nick's like, all right, well, we don't have to worry about this anymore. And she's like, no, you don't understand. Six people died here tonight. And you know what? I'm going to stay here next Halloween. And I'm going to make sure it doesn't happen. And in fact, I'm going to be here every Halloween so this never happens again for the rest of my life. And Nick's like, yeah, okay. Can we go now? Can the movie fucking end now? And she's like, yes. And then they walk away. Goodbye, Zachary Banks. Goodbye. <laughs> oh, dude. Yeah, they're waving to the chubs and the fucking alligator. I, I, somebody watched Hocus Fucking. They even, I know Hocus Pocus is just a term that's been around for centuries, but like, come on. You watched Hocus Pocus. They're, they're waving to Carol. Uh, uh, yeah, exactly. Kane yeah. And, and everybody in Scrooge. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's it's a very like. Again, I feel like I said stereotypical a lot this episode, and it really wasn't intentional, but it just fit. It's a stereotypical ass ending. It's just very like by the numbers and yeah. like not very like. And I, she puts like the wood on the on the on the gate like a cross or that's something. What I'm saying. Yeah, that's what, that's that's what like, I said. And like I don't know, I just expected a little bit more from yeah, Kevin. Yeah, yeah. And I don't know if that was a Kevin decision or a right Jimmy what, decision. Like it gets kind of muddled because of that. It yeah. gets muddy. It gets muddy because like, and maybe the way that it's shot is just kind of shitty. You know? That too, yeah. Mm, I don't know. It could I, be that. I think generally speaking, this is shot pretty well, but there are definitely shots in this that are very by the number. Like, let's just put a camera and let's get the people talking. Yeah, it's it's very, and a lot of this stuff is like flat. It's not like really dynamic mm. with the lighting. I mean, there some are some- of it is. Some, some parts are really good. And a lot of that, I think, is because they are on weird angles in this house that they just had to work with and more power to their camera people. I fuck. Qu I guess. Qu question mark, dude. <laughs> And we get that fucking signature uh, Amelia Kincaid laugh, and then it's fucking credits. And there's like a, you know what I loved? I love the fucking like Night of the Demons three rap at the end, where it was like her like saying the line, and she's like, "It's Halloween or whatever," and it's like it's like remixed. It sounds like a fucking Fat Boy song or oh, something. Oh, I turn that shit right oh, yeah, off. Yeah, I yeah. miss that. Da -da -da Don't fall asleep. No, she says like Happy Halloween or something. Huh. Shit. She gives a some Freddy ass lines. Oh, she gives There's that. A bunch she gives this. it to Abby. She's like, "Happy Halloween, bitch." Uh, she happy Halloween, bitch. Yeah, no, she does again. The Freddy influence. <laughs> the Freddy mania has been over for a decade, but they're felt in this film. I don't. You know what? I, that was totally a Jimmy thing, right? He was like, "No, put that's that what line he did in. see. That's so good, like Nightmare on Elm Street Five, right? He like, saw Freddy's so dead. It's yeah, he saw Freddy's dead. Oh man, this is a master. The the hearing aid guy. Who would, that is some genius. I mean, actually, I, actually, is one of the better kills in that film. Sure. but it's the one that I remember. The nails on the chalkboard. Yeah, yeah. I love that. How can we get that in my movie? Doesn't make I, any sense. Uh, what if she wore a baseball cap? Yeah, I'm gonna do my own thing. I'm gonna make a name for myself, being a horror director, even though I never watched the other movies with the sequel. Perfect. Demon House. It's called Demon House. It's not related. Angela's not having a party in this movie. <laughs> she definitely doesn't have a party going. She's on. a witch. Wait. No, she's a soccer mom. No, wait. I don't know what she I is. I saw Sabrina the Teenage Witch is popular. This is 97. <laughs> I think that was out by then. Probably. What's funny is, like, I remember vividly watching Night of the Demons 2 on, like, Sci-Fi in USA. Oh, I'm but sure, But not yeah. Night of the Demons 3. Nobody wanted to watch it. Uh, I don't know. I think, I don't know why. I guess. It was on know. at 3 a.m. You had to get the, the EP tape yeah, out to record pr probably, that Probably, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was also 97, so... The tapes are still 
No, not tapes. I just mean 97, like, I'm trying to think, like... Oh, like the timeline in your head of the what you were watching of, at like, the timeline of, like, where... Yeah, like, where I was and where sure, everything was. Sure, sure. I don't know. Like, maybe they just didn't air, air it a lot. I, I definitely remember Night of the Demons 2 being on sci-fi, though, okay. and watching that shit. But yeah, man, trick or trash, baby. So uh, what treat is this in your treat bag? Okay, so, y- you know, like, double bubble gum... Double the, bubble gum, yeah. Uh, you know, you always get it. Usually around Halloween is when I see it a lot. But those, I used to buy it myself those, also. Those fucking hard ass, hard ass boys. bubble gum. They're like fifty cents a buck, maybe. <laughs> worse than bazooka. Uh, worse than bazooka. But you know, you you stick a honk in your mouth and you're chewing on that for a while. So okay, so the first movie is when you first get that bad boy. You're chewing on it for twenty minutes. It loses taste. You put it in the wrapper. You don't have a garbage can around. You put it in your pocket. You, you'll do it later. So the second film is you forgot you had it in your pocket and you, f- you pull it out like a week later when you're doing laundry and it's got like lint on it. But, you know, it's in the wrapper. So really, it's the wrapper has lint, but a little got in there and it's it's kind of like been chewed to shit. But you want to just try it to see if there's any flavor left. So you bite in, you chew it for like a minute and you're like, oh, oh, not the worst thing I ever tasted. But damn, that was a mistake. And so you put it back in the wrapper and uh-huh. it's back in the pocket because you still can't find a garbage anywhere and you don't want to litter. Right. So then, like, a year later, like, you've cleaned these pants, like, many, many times, but for some reason, like, sometimes, you know, you have, like, those jeans that have, like, a pocket in a pocket, and things can get lodged in there, like, sure. pennies and shit. Yeah. Well, that gum got lodged in there, and you just didn't really think about it, because it's, like, flat in the in the, in the the jeans. It's, like, melded in the jeans. But one day, you're digging in there, you know, you're playing pocket pool or something, uh. and you feel that gum, and you're like, holy shit, my gum from Night of the Demons 1. <laughs> this has got to be just as good as it was. Uh, 10 years ago, what? or whatever the analogy was I said. It wasn't even good as in the first place. Uh, yeah, so then, you, you know, you, you, you could probably see where I'm going with yeah. this. You, you pull it out, you rip the fucking just, it's almost like paper, yeah. or uh, uh, I guess the paper would be the thing, the gum that it's attached to. I was going to say the uh, gum is like paper. It's like so uh, dissolved at that point, but mm, you got it. You might as well try it. You shove it in your mouth, and you're just puking. And uh, you try to puke into the, you know, the, the, the paper to, you know, put it back in the pocket to throw mm. it out later. But at that point, it's just a total fucking mess uh, that needs to be thrown out. You need to clean up the mess. You're just, you don't even know why you stuck that thing in your fucking mouth other than that it said Night of the Demons on the front of it. And you thought it might taste the same. Uh, this movie sucks. Um, and, and you know. <laughs> you don't say. You know, the fucking sad thing mm. is that this is actually shot competently. Uh, yeah, I, I think for it's, what it is, for the second sequel, very that, simple that we can't even confirm if it yeah. was on video or or just was thrown on the internet somewhere. No, it was it was on. It went, I think it was directed video. Okay, yeah. uh, I think in the context of the third None of the Demons film direct video, it is totally serviceable for the from a production standpoint. Sure, uh, the plot there's ideas there, like we talked about. There's there's Kevin had some ideas. It didn't come out in in the wash, let's say. Uh, I don't know if it was his fault, Kaufman's fault, the actor's fault, uh, the effects uh, department's fault, or a little bit of calling A, B, and C. Yeah. Uh, nothing really gels well in this. Again, I'll reference Stepfather one last time here. Uh, again, those movies progressively get worse and kind of lose the magic. Even though that third film is fine for what it is, it's similar in the sense of this. I don't like it because it's it just missed the point by the third movie. Right. Just like I feel like this just missed the point by the third movie. Sure, you got Amelia Kincaid in there. Okay. What else do you got? Uh, it's just kind of just like, it's boring. The kills are kind of like whatever. Like, yeah, the heart rip's cool. Yeah, like them th- her throwing the badge is kind of a cool concept, but you don't see it. Mm. Like there's ideas, man, and that's frustrating to me because it's like I don't need this fucking movie. I don't know who this is for, but there are people that this is for. People that did like that second film that were like, I, I could take a little bit more Angela, a little bit more Whole House. I'd be curious to see who's nostalgic for Night of the Demons three. Sure, but I'm saying they, they made this for a reason. They didn't just say, okay, yeah, that's the one to pick off the shelf because again, yeah. like the first one's a cult classic. But I mean, don't quote me this, but I don't remember it making a shit ton of money. Not enough to warrant us two sequels, but well, then again, what do I really know? I think it did well. Did I it? it did, I think it did well enough, yeah. Okay, okay. I mean, I love the movie, I just don't know. I mean, it's a staple of everybody who's in that movie's career. Oh, okay, And it, okay. we're still going strong. We got the fucking 4K coming out. We got fucking oh, action well. figures. We okay, got fucking, okay. you, know, you know. Fair you know. enough, fair enough. I guess my whole point of saying all that uh, jambalaya of, of bubblegum mess, <laughs> let's say, and that's a disgusting thought, Sure. Uh, is, is that it's just, it's not very good. I wish they stopped at one. If you need the second one, it's there for you. I'm good, but stop at two. This is a rare case. I've said this for only a few movies. 
and the history of this show, just fucking skip it. If you're really interested, I guess I'll give the caveat that this Blu-ray did just come out. If you really want to know, get the fucking Blu-ray. Or completest. Cause, yeah. Well, right, because it's not even worth looking for online unless you really want to go through that hassle. Yeah. More power to you, but I don't think it's worth it. Get the Blu-ray or just skip this thing out. It, flat out and just watch the original. It's it's dusty bubble gum that's been in your pocket <laughs> for 10 fucking years. Throw the jeans out. Get a new pair. <laughs> Uh, this is a, a sugar-free Reese's peanut butter. <sighs> okay, it looks like it's, it's my be, mom. It looks like it's gonna be good, but then you eat it and you're like, this doesn't fucking taste right, right? Doesn't look like a it, It's got it's got all the things that should work. You know, you got Kevin Tenney writing it, and and it's got the moniker of Night of the Demons three, and it's got uh Amelia Kincaid, and like you think that it should work. But it doesn't, man. No. It, it it is ve- it's stale, is what it is. And it, you know when you, which is crazy when you, you have the opening where there's a gunfight in a convenience store. Yeah, which stale is, is the word. Well, to we, use. well, which is the problem with it is it starts off strong and mm. then it just totally takes shit. And I feel like a big part of that is because of the rushed effects and just like the the first time horror director who didn't watch any of the other movies. This it completely lacks atmosphere, and that's oh, a yeah. big part of this movie, and that's a big part of the first movie that doesn't carry over to this even the second one yeah but the second the second Less one so, but... the second one is very specific in its campiness and there are some really great effects in it and i'll oh, give yeah. it that and i think it's shot better than this third one i would agree with that but uh but this man like again like i haven't really watched this much i think this might be the second time i've ever watching this movie mm. ever like in my life um it just there's no there's no bite to it, man. I mean, the the best takeaway from this movie is is Abby <laughs> for me. Uh, yeah. Like and that's sure. not saying much cuz it's just like, oh, she's a hot chick or whatever. Like that and that's kind of shitty. But like this film she's the most memorable part that should not be the case is your point. Yeah, right. Yeah. And <laughs> like I I feel like it, there's a really strong script there that it, I feel like if Kevin was able to direct it as well, mm. I feel like we could have got a really good third installment to this series. You know what I mean? Even if he directed the second one. And I, I think he couldn't do the second one because he was he was at the same time when they were producing it, Republic Pictures, that he was doing um, Witchboard 2. Oh, okay. With Amy Dolan's. So he couldn't shoot it anyway. Sure. Um, but it's kind of this bitch thing where like he's attached to it as a producer and he's writing the screenplay, but like really doesn't have too much pull in terms of how the movie's made. Mm, and yeah. then has to go back and fucking fix it, like paste it together the best he can. No, I, I listen, I get it. And like he's had to do that a few times. Uh, the seller comes to mind too, where he had to take over for the director that was doing that and kind of fix, try to fix that movie the best he could. Um, and it's kind of the same case here where he had to go back and reshoot shit and recut it and put it together and kind of get a decent movie question mark out of it. Right. It's just, it's not very good. You know, and that's unfortunate. Um, I would say, though, I would recommend, like, if you do want to complete the series um, and you don't have this film, I would say grab the Shout Factory Blu-ray because I think owning it as part of the series, like, again, like, I, I like having even the bad sequels with the exception of maybe... The Chucky movies, <laughs> I, I I can stop at <laughs> I can stop at Bride and be fine. I'm good, but like, Fair. Okay. but like in particular with like Night of the Demons or like Texas Chainsaw Massacre, it's not that bad. It's not so bad that I I, I never want to see this piece of shit again. But it, it's a thing where like I think it's significant to kind of preserve this film as part of the rest of the series. And I think it's really interesting that there's a director's cut on it. The special features are what really sold me on on the disc. And I don't really have any other physical copies of this. So sure. It was and it's so hard to find anyway, because that's another kind of alluring <laughs> thing for me where it's like, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna pick that up. I mean, that definitely fits my caveat. Too, for for a different reason, but yeah, the, because it doesn't exist really anywhere else unless you have that tape that you said it's hard to find. It's or hard, it's hard to find. Grainy as hell and it's on the to, internet yeah. somewhere. And, but yeah, it, it's kind of a damn shame, is what it is. And like, I think Kevin's even Kevin even says it himself that like he wishes he could remake this movie. And like, I would go in on that, call it something else, like uh, not Night of the Demons three, but like call it Night of the Demons whatever, and kind of like redo the script or like adjust it for for now. <laughs> I mean, I if, mean if, if it was 1998, okay, but I'm kind of good in 2023. I don't know, man. I'd rather like, have something just different at that point. No, I, I mean, 
personally, sure. if the right hands got this, or like even if Kevin directed himself, I think. Like a direct sequel or remake, but it's called like four or something like that. Like Maybe not you... four, but Demons, Night of the Demons, something. Mm, like you know a subtitle I mean? kind of thing, yeah. Like, like Evil it's... Dead Rise, but it's evil, like Night of the Demons. Right. Where in that vein. Well, where it's, a, re- verbatim, where it's a remake of this movie, of the sequel. Oh, like actually a remake. It's a remake of the sequel. Uh-huh. It's just called Night of the Demons something else. Um, but I think hmm. I think you could do a lot more with it, and it would be nice to have a new Night of the Demons to besides the fucking one with Edward Furlong and uh, Shannon Elizabeth. Oh, that's the remake. That's yeah, the remake, okay. which we might tackle in some capacity at some point, maybe a commentary track or something. I gotta rewatch that again and see if that's rife for talking about or what. I, I did uh, not like it when I saw it. I'm gonna just throw a dart into the dark and say uh, probably not but report back and let me know <laughs> for sure but uh it's just a shame it's a damn shame but I, w- I would love to see uh I would love to see a new Night of the Demons movie done proper and good I, I could written see... by Kevin yeah no I mean I could definitely see the appeal to it yeah. I'm just also kind of like give me something else but yeah I guess at this point we're so removed from it that yeah fuck it why not you're right I mean to bring it back man like I, I think I, even now like there's it, still it would feel new at that point still, I guess is what I'm saying right but there's still a big influx of people trying to capture that magic of oh, the yeah. 80s myself included and like if if you could harness the first night of the demons and then do a new story which I think he was trying to do with this movie but it just turned out like shit yeah. because of all the fucking bullshit behind the scenes and, the, and a director that shouldn't even fucking been there um, well, that's the pisser, right? Yeah. That's the real pisser. Um, I, I, you know, I would, I would like, I would like to see it still for sure. I, I mean, if we're in the just to kind of play off that thought, yeah. uh, since we're in that requel phase, although it seems to be slowing down now that the Exorcist movie just took a shit. Fuck that shit. I'm not talking about doing something like that. I'm not saying that, but I'm saying yeah. the trend in the last five or six yeah. years. Uh, sure. Why not? I, yeah. I mean, get Mimi Kincaid to make a cameo. I wouldn't want it to be like a full blown thing again because I, again, I said earlier that I think she's like kind of even phoning this in a little, but maybe that's because she had to film it twice. Well, I think Amelia. It was and... also her last like major acting role, so maybe she was already kind of checked she out was, by then. She was on her. I don't think she even did it anymore. And mm. it was just kind of like, hey, come back. Would you for this much? I guess she could do a thing like the fucking Exorcist, uh, the new one, <laughs> where it's like just this quick cameo. They pay her some fucking money to show up. Probably not as much as, you know, the woman in Exorcist got paid, but, yeah. you know, hey. She's an opening scene. It gets transferred. The demon comes out of her fucking bones. I don't know what. Ah. Just get her in there enough so you can have the connection. I don't. I don't. And then the rest is whatever. I mean, she could just be periphery. I mean, like I think I'm pretty sure if you're gonna do I'm it. I'm pretty sure Mimi Kincaid and Linnea are cameos in the the uh, oh, remake. Remake. Oh, okay. Maybe they already did that then. Um, but I, I, you could just separate it. Sure. No, just sure. Start start fresh. I mean, maybe it'd be cute to have Linnea or something because she's still like really big and stuff. And maybe maybe Mimi. Maybe it could be like the uh, Evil Dead remake. It'd be great. I don't think so. <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> Just said that to get a rise you out of you. Fucking are you an Evil Dead rise out of me? You fuck. You said it. Tm. Yes. And uh, before you guys get out of here, if you want some more movie dumpster content, head over to patreon.com slash movie dumpster. Get yourself a free ad free version of the audio version of the show, plus a whole bunch of other goodies. We got watch alongs, commentary tracks. We actually just put out a long playthrough of Mortal Kombat 1, played through the whole game. Uh, we're actually going to do a ripe review. It kind of just turned into a six hour playthrough. So check that out. Which is still and, fun. Yes. And uh, a ton of other stuff. So go check that out. Patreon.com slash movie dumpster. Yeah, you definitely want to go check that out. And guess what? For no money at all, you can leave us a five star review on your favorite podcast app. If you're listening on your favorite podcast app or if you're watching us on YouTube, do us a favor. Hit that like button and subscribe if you haven't. Because it really both of those things really help the show grow. And if you're digging the show... That's how you can support us. Share it. Share it, share it with your friends and do all kinds all that all those good things with it, you know? Trick or fucking treat, motherfuckers. Give it to them. You know? Yeah, give them give them the Sam treatment, the lollipop to the neck. Right Joe. through the throat. Yeah. And if you want any updates on what's going on with the uh dumpster, the video dungeon, uh, you just follow us on any social media app of your choosing at Movie Dumpster. We're on the X's, we're on the Twitters, we're on the uh Threads, Instagrams, the Instagrams. Instagrams. Just search at Movie Dumpster on YouTube, of course, and uh, give us a follow. So that's it. That's Night of the Demons 3 from 1997, directed by Jimmy Kaufman. I'm Joe Lascola. And I'm Sean O'Rourke. Thanks for visiting the dumpster.